There he is, father just loose in the world, ready to wreak havoc with his abs. <laughs> Let's get him. Good luck with that. Seriously. Did you know this guy can make a son? I won't let you devour any more people. Good. Episode 62, a fierce counterattack. It does feel like the tide is shifting a little bit. I mean, it couldn't have gotten any worse than what it was before, with everyone dead. You insist on treating humans as a lower life form, but don't you see? Only through them can a Philosopher's Stone be created, and only through a stone can a homunculus arise. But what does a homunculus produce? What do you create? Creation is all, and you've done nothing but destroy. You may think you've reached a perfect state of being, but in truth, all you've reached is a dead end! That is true. If he were truly a god, he could be above this, right? But instead, he's just using human souls to create other things, right? Nothing is really gained. One of the things that struck me from the beginning of this whole god cycle, this god arc, is that there's really nowhere for him to go, it seems. Like, I can't even imagine what he would really want. And he seems to be confusing just being powerful as a human for being a god. But he sort of can't escape his humanity, as frustrating as that might be for him to realize. I can create. Shall I produce some humans for you? <gasps> Look at my abs. I don't... I don't think that's what Hornheim meant. At last I found immortality. Don't you see? Is that the king of Xerxes? King Xerxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't... I don't think we wanted this. Oh no! That was all sorts of confusing for me. It's a weird feeling. What the hell is happening? Oh, not much. The father of the homunculi is going berserk out there! So let's go! That's all. Yeah. We'll need anyone who can still fight! You! The fat frogman and the two women! Get out! <laughs> You're injured! Absolutely not! I still have forces who need me to lead them! Forget that! Get down here now! This is no time for a pissing contest over who's in charge! I'm not taking orders from- General! <laughs> Armstrong could still do a lot of good, even without limbs. What sort of monster is he? He appears to be an ordinary man. However, within him is a philosopher's stone powered by many thousands of people. You could say he's used its energy to claim the powers of God for himself. Sort of. I wouldn't really say that, though. But in context, I guess power-wise, that makes sense. He can destroy everyone. Easily. Any ordinary human should leave now. My men are still fighting. I will not just abandon my forces. None of these people are ordinary humans. Have you forgotten who we are? We brig soldiers are trained to respond instantly as one force to any threat, even without you. Yellow Squad, come in! Are you still there? Eastgate, Blue Squad, report in. What's your status? From what I hear, you've been injured, General. Please, stay and wait where you are. Listen up, Alex! Yes? Take the radio with you. When at any cost. But of course! Yes! <laughs> I love that she has faith in him again. Uh, hold on. I mean, he's earned you it. You two aren't in any shape to fight either. I am going to burn up that Philosopher's Stone of his. I'll need the Lieutenant's help in order to do so. <laughs> I'll need my Hawkeye. Let it go. Now, let's move. Right. I'm coming too. It is my job to protect the young Lord. <sighs> Everybody here has proved themselves and has earned their place here. They're all very different people, but I think there's a bunch of things they all have in common. One of them is that they're not afraid of sacrificing. They're not afraid of putting themselves in the way of great personal harm in order to do what they feel is right, especially for the people around them. And I think most of them, if not all of them, would prefer that they take the burden on their shoulders rather than running away and leaving it to someone else. And I think there are definitely moments where they go too far in that, you know, because people don't want you to sacrifice yourself, you know? It, it makes more sense to share the burden. But still, as a system, it works pretty well, you know? Like, all of those people alone can do a lot, and together, they just feel unstoppable. It's like Roy says, where everybody protects the people around them, and they in turn protect others. But it's even more than that because each of the individual links on the chain is so so powerful so impressive and so this network is just something else like these are the people that you want you know everybody's invited to the father party everybody should be here and should be allowed to do their thing take care and keep them safe friend bestie <laughs> 
<laughs> Hell yeah, that was a good one. They just get better and better. So this is where you met your end. And was it you that killed him? It was him? a glorious end. He arrived here. He was already badly injured. It was a lot of people. It, it was a for those collaborative effort. Right, right. Captain Buccaneer. Right. He was working with soldiers from Shing. He inflicted a mortal wound. Buccaneer, Fu, Greed, and a random brig soldier. Two of those people under like Armstrong's I command. Told you, Bradley. Briggs men are as tough as they come. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt about that at this point. None at all. Oh, Shoumei, you're really all right. I'm so glad. <gasps> oh, thank God. He was out there for a second. Oh, no, no, no. This is what I'm afraid of. Somehow I didn't even realize that they were caught in the blast. I was so focused on those human things being destroyed that I, I didn't notice. But yeah, good job, Al, saving May again. This was a little bit more deadly than the father gun, though. But this is exactly what I'm worried about. It's amazing that they survived at all. Teacher! Teacher! Say something! I'm alive. Because of Mr. Owenheim. He got to me at the last second. <gasps> oh no. Oh my god. Owenheim! Hey, snap out of it! Let's. He was already kind of running. Running low. Someone just shoot him. Your target is the man with the long blonde hair. Make sure you don't shoot full metal. Nice. I love how these just like brig soldiers are doing their part. It's so great that it's not just the heroes. Fire! But yeah, this is not normal weaponry. It's not going to do it. Hey, full metal. But it's a good are distraction okay? to get them out of there. He didn't even flinch. Yeah. Seriously? What was I saying about the tide turning? Roy's fire would do a lot of good here, if you can actually, you know, make it happen. Take cover, man! No! There he is! Ah! I like how they respect Roy's powers. This is a great team. Old metal <laughs> nice. Awesome card. Old metal Our father. Interesting. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with what they did with Father. In terms of making him a fightable threat. He feels like a last boss, like a real quality last boss, you know what I mean? The way he moves, the way he looks, his powers. It's a departure from what I initially expected based on Father's whole vibe. As just being this sort of elderly kind of dude sitting in a chair. He's clearly not a god in the way he wants to be, but he feels like a god in, in that video game way. That ultimate being sort of thing. Adjusted to 12 o'clock. I can't tell how much to throttle the flames. You don't have to throttle them. Oh, <laughs> 50. No, 53. This clapping transmutation doesn't feel natural. Incoming attack, Colonel. Dead ahead. There you Absolutely go. Done. I'll say. This could turn out to be handy. Fire now! Keep firing! Don't give him any opportunity to fight back! Make him use his philosopher's stone! I would be so happy if Armstrong just punches him. Oh, he made the- he made the- the noise! <laughs> That's a first. Amazing! You want to think this is working, but... power like that, then this entire world would be mine in no time! Right. Greed. Greed. 
You've always talked about wanting the entire world, but is this really what you meant? Oh, yes. Once I have this supreme power, everything in the world will be mine! <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe it will fill the emptiness inside me! It but it's even probably like that, won't. You finally quench the thirst that I've lived with since the day I was born! How ignorant you are. <laughs> what you're seeking is not what you truly want. Yeah. Keep quiet, you little pest! I am free, the avaricious! I want everything! If that isn't the truth about desire, just about anything you desire, once you get it, it feels great, <laughs> but goodness just resets to neutral. And then you got the next thing to go after. But I think I differ a little bit in my interpretation of what that means, like what the implications of that are. I think one common interpretation is that desire is wrong, you know, or desire is misleading. I actually think desire is really important. Like I've spoken about before, both in this show and in The Last Airbender. You have a radar or you have a, a compass sort of for the things that you need the most. And I think often that manifests as desire. For me, a lot of the times when I'm really drawn to something and I really work hard at something, I realize later that in a way, that was maybe my subconscious or something guiding me towards dealing with what probably was a deficiency that I wasn't even aware of. In the cases where I've been fortunate enough to get what I wanted, the utility of the thing itself, you know, the achievement of the desired thing itself is always sort of fleeting, but the value lies in the knowing that I've done it. The fact that I pushed myself, the acquiring of new skills or insights, observing myself go through a process of setting an aim and then moving myself towards that aim and getting that aim. That for me is the most valuable thing. And I carry those feelings with me. That too is a never ending process. You know, like I'm never going to be a whole person, I don't think. Or if I ever will be, I already am. But that process is a way I found to feel like life has meaning and to feel connected to myself and to feel connected to the world. And in that sense, it's not something that even needs to be completed. It's something that has utility in the present progressive, right? Like I am doing this, this is how I am living. So all that said, and back to the show, we've seen greed grow as a person. I think I think it's intuitive enough to know that, you know, he can have all the power in the world and he would definitely enjoy that, but it's not going to scratch that itch. But in the meantime, he's been having a great life, you know? <laughs> he's becoming a great greed, which is really cool. It's a weird thing. All the information is out there. We see people who have everything that they could ever want. People who have reached unfathomable levels of success or material wealth or something like that. And it's obvious, immediately obvious, those people are exactly the same. <laughs> They're exactly the same in terms of their general disposition. In fact, many of them are worse. So it's definitely not the thing. And in fact, I think it becomes toxic when you confuse the, the thing for the journey, you know? And that's that's one of the reasons why it's such a common thing in in these stories the cliche of you had everything you needed the whole time or it wasn't the destination it was the journey it was the friends you made along the way right all that is 100 percent true in my experience now he's toast get it toast but but he's not toast he's still bread maybe humans are unable but what about a homunculus uh, no. <laughs> Wonderful. You're just in time, Greed. What a dutiful son you are. As it happens, I could use another Philosopher's Stone. I'll be taking yours. Good acting, right? You can't take my stone from me without dropping your own barrier! Stupid fool! I bet you never thought <laughs> your godly powers could be taken away, did ya? Well, I'd rather Greed have it than Father have it. Punch him! Punch him! Damn. I just want Armstrong to punch him once. Oh no! Winry's gonna be so pissed. <laughs> I believe in the power of Armstrong's punches. Oh, oh. Showing signs of weakness. He's losing control! He can't keep the power of God he claims to have in check anymore! Yeah, we're sort of always gonna go this way. That didn't look good. Thank God it was one of those knock everyone away blasts instead of the incinerate everyone blasts. A stone! A stone! A philosopher's stone! <laughs> it is a philosopher's stone after all. I guess they all are. Oh my God. Ugh. Oh. May. 
No, no. Whatever you're thinking, I don't like it. I don't know what it is. I don't want to know what it is. Stop it. Ed was willing to sacrifice his right arm in order to bring my soul back. So, shouldn't the reverse be possible? Alphonse, what are you saying? No, stop. All you have to do is clear a path. Can you do that? But if you do this, do you know what will happen? There's no time. Nobody wants this. Give it to me! No Edward! Your energy! Oh. This is gonna kill Edward. This is, like, worse than death. What are you doing? No. Don't. Please. Help. Keep moving, brother. No! No! This better not be it. Now we put our faith in brother. No, my beautiful armored owl. So, your soul has entered you, huh? But will he be coming back for you? Oh, he will. He will. Yeah. I'm sure of it. It's a relief that at least he. Huh? <sighs> oh. I can't wait to see what he'll be sacrificing. <laughs> oh, man. He's still okay in some form. He has a body. He may be trapped in the portal, but I believe in Ed that he'll be able to get Al back. Keep moving was the perfect thing to say too. Al is too, <laughs> too beautiful for his own good. I wish he would be less Al sometimes. Speaking of sacrifice. My god, it's like everybody in the show is just racing to be the biggest sacrifice for the greatest good. It's so tragic and in a way backwards, at least thinking about it from Ed's perspective, because Ed feels responsible. You know, he's felt responsible for what happened this whole time. It's all been on his shoulders. And it hurts because Al never held him accountable for that. You know, Al never begrudged him for what happened. Al just wants Ed to be happy and live a good life. And so, you know, keep moving has been their thing for so long. Like, we don't know what'll happen. The situation seems really bleak, but all we can do is keep moving. But the thought of Ed moving without Al is just too... It just hurts. It hurts too much. Which is sort of why it's the perfect thing to say. <laughs> and it is what Ed needs to do. And it's what I'm going to do. And by that I mean I'm going to believe that Ed will figure it out. Figure out a way to get Al back out of the portal. You know, now that we've figured out this whole arm exchange thing, you can just give your arm back, right? <laughs> Winry's a pretty good mechanic. Automel's not that bad. Use it. Keep moving. It was always going to be Ed and Al, right? That did it. Whoa. It's working. Yeah. Nice, Ed. Just keep going. Go, kid! Alright! Yeah! Let him have a memo! Kick his ass out! <laughs> <laughs> Fight Edward Elric! Oh my god, this is so satisfying, especially from the military. You know, they've always loved him and believed in him. This is what you desperately wanted. Yeah! Isn't it? Please don't die! Go, Edward! Fight on! Full metal! Even yeah. Roy. You're right. This is what I wanted. I wanted the chance to have friends like these. Oh, that's so sweet. Normal fist punch. Get up, you novice. <laughs> he just called him a novice. Wow. Imagine calling God a novice. <laughs> Damn. 
that was a very emotional episode, obviously. Even though I have faith that Al will be able to live a life again, it still hurts bitterly that he sacrificed himself like that. I mean, it hurts in the best of ways, you know what I mean? It's just who Al is. I feel like he would do that without a second thought for just about anybody, you know, that's just his character. But for him to make that sacrifice for his brother so that his brother could, you know, destroy the ultimate evil, it's a wonderful thing. And then adding on to the layers of emotion is <laughs> the whole crew like cheering it on. It's so, you know, it's a little bit cute, right? But in the best way. Ed throughout the whole show has been this little punk, but he's been this little punk that everybody saw through. You know, they all saw through to who Ed really was and they all love and admire him and are amazed by him. And so there's something about this that just feels so complete. We've literally seen Ed grow up. We've seen him grow physically, but more importantly, we've seen him grow as a human being, a thinking, caring, alive, awake human being. And then the little moment of greed, this is what I wanted. I wanted friends. <laughs> The show has earned it. You know, they've earned these moments because we've seen who they are and we've seen them be tested against the most brutal and honest facts of the world. The show hasn't shied away from anything. And so the fact that they can come to these conclusions and be great people feels right. It doesn't feel like a shortcut or a stand-in. They're not throwaway lines, right? I mean, who wouldn't want friends like this? <laughs> I just love these characters so much. And now with Father almost beaten, we gotta get Al out. We gotta get Al out without any more casualties. That's what I want to happen. I need that to happen. <laughs> but yeah, two episodes left. Father seems to be defeated, but there's still a lot that could happen. Anything could happen. So I'm eagerly awaiting episode 63, when Al comes back and everything works out.